After the excessive heat of stage one of the Santos Tour Down Under, the second stage between Stirling and Paracum, a ride of 148 kilometres, it was 20 degrees cooler and there were no complaints from the riders as they faced the start from Stirling with five circuits of the town before going off towards Paracum. Yes, 132 riders. In fact, Johan Le Bon crashed out of the Santos Tour Down Under yesterday, the only rider not to finish. It didn't take very long before the first attack of the day came, but that was pulled back into the fold because a very important sprint, sprint came up after just 23 kilometres of the race. And this was a battle between Ben Swift, the big sprinter, as he came through nicely, and the ochre jersey of Caleb Buen just trying to snatch a second's time bonus on the right. He missed out. He crossed the line in fourth place. So the riders then settled down, or at least that's what they expected, but immediately that sprint was over at 24 kilometres, an attack by the German member of the Movistar Spanish team, Yasha Sutelin. This was part of a plan by the Spanish riders. Yes, he got himself an advantage at one stage of around about four minutes and lots of joviality going on in the main field. But once they started to get down to the last few laps, they started to take the pace a lot more seriously. Yosha Sutulin, though, did manage to get himself the sprint point at 65 kilometres into the race and three seconds time bonus. But it was the battle of the second place of much more interest as the potential leaders of the tour tried to snatch their time and the riders themselves happened to snatch their feeding bags. This became a close battle, but it wasn't affecting the projected overall leaders of the tour. It was the teammates of Peter Sagan, Michael Kohler and Rudiger Selig, who took out second and third. Back out on the course again now, and Sutelin was riding extremely well and looking good. 3 minutes 55 the gap as he continued his circuits which would total 5 21 kilometer laps before peeling off and heading over Norton Summit towards the finish in Paracol. But then the teams uh, who want to win this bike race overall started to take the chase very seriously, uh, powered by Orica Scott and, of course, Team Sky. And with just about 40 kilometres to go, it all came back together. Yes, when the chase came, it was over in a flash. And then came the long, swooping descent of Norton Summit, a high spot in the Adelaide Hills, overlooking the city of Adelaide and, in the distance, the beauty of the Southern Ocean. One rider, one of the pre-race favourites, uh, Rowan Dennis, stopping at the side of the road with for a rear wheel change. But he was not the only rider having problems. Sergio Anao of Team Sky was well off the back of the pack at this point. Tremendous wheel change, very quick indeed, pushed off by former Tour de France rider Alan Piper, himself an Australian, getting Rowan Dennis back in the fray. But there were other problems which had happened on the descent of Norton Summit. Catching out the man who finished third in this race overall last year, Sergio Enau. They were now trying to rejoin a fast depleting peloton. Yes, he had uh, help from uh, Kenny Ellison, but the speed and the approach of this final climb of the day made it very difficult for anybody who had problems to get back into the pack. The overall leader at the start of the day, though, uh, Caleb Ewan, he put all of his work into trying to set the sprint up for the finish line for his own teammate, Esteban Chavez. The dam on top of the gorge climb and Caleb Ewan had done his best for his team, now sacrificed his race lead. He knew he couldn't conquer the final hill, so he tried to pace them to the foot of it. And now he was just set to come on home. The first onto the climb itself of just over three and a half kilometres was the world champion, Peter Sagan. But a little bit too enthusiastic there. He soon dropped out of the limelight as Tasmanian Richie Port spread the field across the mountain one kilometre to go. Yes, the only rider just uh, holding onto his back wheel for a while was the Spanish rider Gorka Izagir. But Richie Port this time had decided he wanted to put a lot of time between himself and everybody else. Izagir mixing here with the Colombian on the right, Esteban Chavez. The two locked on, but they had no answer to the acceleration of Richie Port. Port has three times finished overall second in this race as he tried now to crack this one. He's got the lead. We're on stage two. There are now four more days to come. But Richie Port knew he had to do well on this day. So Port gritting his teeth, coming home with measurable time gaps here. This was an incredible show of defiance. In the race for second place, it was Izaguirre who took it for Spain. And over the line in third place, Chavez. And, well, the former race leader, 
Caleb Ewan was just glad to come home. Well, Richie, that, I think, was a performance with complete confidence on the slopes of that climb. Yeah, I mean, I had nightmares of two years ago where, you know, we played cat and mouse there and it didn't work. But, you know, the boys, the BMC recent team boys this morning, they're just incredible. They looked after me the whole day and, uh, you know, it's nice to win on the paracomb. It's good to get a win this season and, uh, yeah, now we try and defend this jersey. A serious option on the overall victory with that ride today. I mean, let's hope so, but, uh, you know, there's some uh, stressful days coming up, so we won't be counting uh, chickens to the hatch sort of thing. A wise man indeed, Richie Port, who has been groomed by his BMC team to try and win the Tour de France in July, is off to a great start. Still four days to go, but he has a lead now over the nearest contender of 20 seconds. It might be enough, but in four days, we'll know. Yoka jersey for him. He'll try and defend it now. When Rowan Dennis took it here two years ago, he did defend it to the end. Can Port do the same?